Hi, this is Raghav Miyatl with Rolling Stone India. Um, I don't know. I think I was just having fun during the pandemic. Um, I think a part of why I did it was because when I was sort of growing up in the scene, I feel like there wasn't really uh, anybody to help and sort of show you the path to how to sort of make a music career happen. And I thought if I can add my two cents to help any young kid sitting in different cities of India to understand how to build their artist brand, just give them some kind of motivation and give them a sense of community, I thought that was the best thing I could do. And I think that's what I was trying to do by the end of it. <laughs> that's a really great question. I think um, it's really important to try and understand different contexts and I think that's what I try to do with uh, music as long as you love doing what you do it doesn't matter what kind of different hats that you wear so I think uh, for me um, a big part of my college life was spent playing in different bands and I feel it gave me the confidence to be able to go to different shows and like hold the attention of the audience uh, I think just playing 50 live gigs gives you a lot of confidence to be able to stand in front of an audience and command their respect and I think uh, wearing different ha hats helps me do that uh, be it sort of running a label, be it sort of an artist, be it sort of an educator for example those are really important things to try and um, understand different perspectives of how the industry works I think yes um, I think the way listening patterns have evolved over time um, I feel like people are listening to more and more singles. Uh, the body of work with songs from a matchbox was to establish the kind of sound, what I stood for, what kind of lyrics I was writing. Uh, but I think over time, if you've seen, I've tried to experiment a lot more. Um, I feel like a record takes about a year to produce and influences change um, your sort of perception of yourself as an artist changes and I feel like singles let me do that where it lets me sort of flow into other records, uh, collaborate more with other people. I think at some point down the line I feel like a year later I will definitely drop a sort of longer record uh, but for now I feel like I've also tried to experiment with that sound a lot um, be it sort of writing in different languages uh, so I want to continue doing that and um, give that room to breathe and try and experiment more before I go into a full length record again. So I think Wo Saad Din is a special song because it's the first time I'm writing, uh, composing in Hindi. Uh, it's something I've tried to do for a really long time, junked a bunch of songs because I didn't feel that they were honest in terms of, uh, I think as a writer you're always constantly trying to write stuff that feels what you're feeling and you sort of put that down on paper and I feel with Wo Saad Din it was that first Hindi song which I felt that it sort of made its mark and I felt like this was a song that I could release. Uh, it started in the pandemic, in fact it's taken a long time for me to finally finish it. Um, but um, I think back in the first phase, no second phase of the lockdown, I think sometime um, in 2020 um, I decided to um, just write this Hindi song, sent it to Ashish who's a really good friend of mine and a producer. Um, I sent him a basic sort of logic demo with basic chords. I actually wrote on a piano instead of writing on my guitar which is usually the instrument of choice that I use. Um, I sent it to him, he produced this and I felt like it needed something more and then I sent it to Hanita to sort of maybe take a crack at writing at writing something um, and it happened, it all happened remotely. Ashish was in Delhi, Hanita was in Delhi. Um, it all happened over Zoom. In fact, Hanita recorded her vocals and we were sitting on Zoom and listening to her while she recorded. So I think it was a complete remote project. It started in the pandemic because it just allowed me that time to write, sort of experiment more with my writing. And this is the first song of many Hindi songs that come out. I think um, both sides, I think running a label and sort of being an artist feed into each other. Um, I think it helps because I get the perspective of being an artist and writing. Uh, the biggest thing is I feel like labels have traditionally been just a check cutter. Uh, but I think if you look at the West, they're also creative partners in the process and that's what I'm trying to do with a bunch of these artists where I sit down in the studio with them, write with them, get other producers, writers to come and collaborate with them. Uh, because as such, uh, I feel there's a huge gap between writing a great song and making it sound great on a record and that's what I'm trying to do at the label with other artists, with other young artists which sometimes takes three years for them to figure it out themselves. How do you get help and get a partner who can sort of help you scale that journey. So I would say uh, it helps a bit of both. Obviously it helps my songwriting 
workshops i've learned a lot at the label of how to release songs market them put them out make them more mainstream make them pop on instagram for example and those are some of the things that i obviously try and use for my sort of music as well i have terrible work life balance i feel my life revolves around music i think i've done it for the last 6 years of my life now uh, so yeah my world is music i do try and take time out for family i have a bunch of friends who i sort of hang out with go for gigs um i think 2023 will see me do a lot more of i feel like fitness bunch of other things spend more time on my music as well um but yeah my life has revolved around sort of the music business i sort of teach a course for young musicians trying to write their own first song um i work at a label so it's a bunch of things but this is my life and i live breathe sleep it that's a really complicated question i feel like there's no one way to approach it uh if you want to go from a to b if a is the starting point and b is sort of a successful music artist who's got a career who's making enough money has enough fans etc i feel there are multiple ways to approach it um i think just being proud of the kind of work that you're putting out is super important uh, i think educating yourself to make yourself better at your craft um sometimes uh just taking in feedback from people who've been doing it for a while really helps uh, but i think the most important thing is to try and find yourself in that sort of journey uh, because i feel like artists who know exactly who they are and what kind of music they're going to put out are eventually successful even if it takes a longer period of time so i would say don't follow a trend just think about who you are what your influences are and what is the kind of music that you want to make and sort of continue that journey and do it in an honest and sort of be consistent with your releases at some point artists should um make sure that their main focus is releasing music uh, because that's what's going to get you far so i feel like as artists i know instagram is important a lot of other things are important but can you spend the most amount of time not shooting a music video but like thinking about the song that you're writing and getting better at that um not following trends because of the sake of it but doing stuff that uh, makes you happy and you feel like it has an audience that it can reach um so i would say like stick your ground spend time on what's important which is making the right amount of music and releasing it in a good way i feel uh, the music mood in india has evolved so much which is the most beautiful part about it um i think the pandemic made everybody realize that there was a distinct sound of independent music which wasn't seeing light of day because of all the clutter that was around us and it finally gave a chance to young independent musicians to sort of break through i think platforms streaming platforms have played a really sort of pivotal role to sort of make this change happen but i think finally uh i think independent music is being recognized for what it is um independent releases are doing as well as some of the biggest mainstream releases and i think that's the best sign and for the next two years i think that's going to constantly happen so i think it's still early days so i feel if you're a young artist start releasing your music now because you're still early to the party and you sort of keep at it and it'll eventually happen for sure uh music trends i think um, more and more artists are going to only focus on audio i think video as a discovery platform has sort of fizzled out over time gone are the days where people used to spend hours on youtube trying to find new videos new trends i think that's changed i think short content apps i think it's there for everybody to see but i think more and more um, instagram and of these other desi apps are going to sort of become drivers of music sampling and i think um, third would be like I feel regional indie I feel is going to be the next big thing where you'll see a lot more artists and it's already happening but you'll see it in a much bigger um way where uh people singing in their local languages will start popping and it'll be an indie sound but it'll still be in their own regional languages and local languages I think the music is ecosystem can be strong if there's a community of people uh I think musicians now are sort of um I've never seen such bonding amongst musicians and I think that's the best part when I was growing up we used to play college festivals and like competitions and the other band used to not talk to the other band right uh, and I think that's finally changed where artists are supporting artists so I think that's the best sign um I think from an institutional standpoint I think things are going to get more streamlined 
um, where I feel like IPRS is going to play a big role in sort of streamlining some of these rights ecosystems, etc., royalties ecosystems. I think um, music education or even the business of music education is something that I feel needs to get better and will hopefully over time. I see a lot of artists who are really aware of what's happening, not just from a song creation perspective, but each of these other things attached to it. So I think that's going to happen. The live scene is going to pick up again because it's a big sort of uh, fall during the pandemic. But I think that's coming in a big way and it'll become more structured and organized. I don't know, but I mean, not at all actually, because I think it's a good thing. I think for me, I do it for myself. I just think of that 14 year old who thought that he wants to do something in the music scene and become an artist one day and be really well entrenched in the music ecosystem. And I, f I feel like it's taken me years to sort of make that happen. Uh, but I still don't want to, even though I do a lot of things, I still want to keep my art at the center of it. Whatever I do, I want to be proud of it. Uh, and I'm just happy that people admire it and sort of look up to what I stand for. So bunch of stuff. I feel like the label keeps running. I mean, sort of, I want to break more and more artists and give them the right tools, get them the right kind of production, get them the right kind of music. Uh, as an artist myself, um, this is a journey I took about two years ago where I started writing in Hindi and it's finally come to fruition. So um, by April, you should see three more songs releasing and a bunch of sort of commercial work where I sort of start writing for OTU shows, etc.